Welcome back, everybody, to Factorio Meiosis. This is episode number 46. That's right, we are back in the world of Factorio Meiosis. We are going to launch some rockets. We're going to try to hit a few milestones. It's been a little while since we had an episode. So let's kick it off the right way. Let's rock it. Let's rock it. Let's launch a rocket. Let's launch 10 rockets. And then let's launch 10 rockets more. And then maybe uh, 10 rockets more. And we'll see just how far we get before we run out of stuff and have to go fix some uh, back-end supply line chain stuff. Saving the map autosave. That is terribly anticlimactic. Okay, here we go. Yes! Power! Rockets! Okay, 79 is where we're starting at. This is plus 10. Let me just... Okay, let's be totally anticlimactic. And let's dive into the options menu. Uh, let's go into other. Autosave. Oh, yes. Okay, so I was killing aliens and stuff. And so I set my autosave to be quicker. So if I die, I can load up and not lose much progress. But now that we're not doing that, let's change that back to 10. Okay, lovely. This is uh, uh, how to make a YouTube video 101. There we go. All right, now the silo doors will close and we'll start on the next cycle. All the robot friends will start delivering supplies. Solid rocket, uh, rocket control units, low density structures, rocket fuel and satellites. Massive swarms of robots flying overhead. Uh, all right, so yeah, it's been a little while since the last episode of Meiosis. Some of you have been waiting a long time for more Factorio. Uh, some of you are wondering, uh, what is meiosis? I don't even remember that. What was it? Okay, so meiosis is, slash was, will be, my third Factorio series. First one was a uh, main bus series, where I m put everything on a belt in parallel. Second was linear Factorio, where the map size was uh, very long and thin. And this is the third series where we try to uh, basically split off different functions into individual quote-unquote cells and uh, connect everything by trains, like a set of veins. Like, this is a multi-organistic, multicellular organism. Look at all these guys. These are our, uh, what would you call these, like, our blood cells? Delivering all of the stuff. Actually, I guess uh, the trains would be the blood. Whatever, doesn't matter. Don't take the, uh, don't take the analogy too far. That is a lot of robots. Uh, but since then, I was a little bit built, burnt out on this series. I had spent 250 hours or so on this map, which was like a third of the time of my entire time spent in Factorio was on this one map. Um, and so I want to do some other things. I planned and executed my fourth Factorio series, which was a, a multiple achievement run where we didn't handcraft more than a hundred items. Okay, they are ready. Uh, almost. These ones down here need to catch up a little bit. Then we'll give them a launch -a Look at all those robots. It's lovely. Never had a a base that went over the top with logistics robots. One day I would like to do that. These are at 94. I guess we're slightly behind on the rocket fuel. Uh, but uh, yeah, I got most of those achievements. In fact, we can go ahead and look at the achievement pane. I have 34 out of 38. I'm only missing four. And one of them is one of the benchmarks I would like to uh, set. For the next few episodes, I would like to produce 20 million electronic circuits. We are at 17 million out of 20, and I would like to start a Factorio series using mods, but you cannot get achievements when you're using mods. So I think this is like a, a nice way to, uh, one of the capstones for the Meiosis series is to produce those 20 million circuits. I think, I'm pretty sure that's within one, within one save. That is not a, like a universal statistic for uh, my account or anything. That's for this map. So let's go ahead and just pin that. Or maybe we'll just check in on it regularly. Yeah, we'll pin it for now. And we might also do this one, supply the player with 10,000 items delivered by logistics robots. Uh, that one's probably not gonna be too tricky. Oh, are we done? We're ready. Okay, let's launch some more rockets. So I finished that series, which took a lot of planning and I live streamed it. Uh, I've been experimenting with live streaming and uh, mixing like live stream footage with YouTube videos. Trying different formats. Uh, but I definitely feel like we left some things unfinished in the meiosis world. Oh my god, it's now noisy! It's loud! 
That is so loud. For one thing, I wanted to launch a lot more rockets, and that's what we're gonna do. Another thing I would like to do is uh, finish that electronic circuit milestone. But really, I have uh, I've learned so much about about Factorio. I would really need to start over entirely to to really put what I've learned to test. This this map has been a lot of fun, and it's massive. Uh, but I would like to try some other series. So what we're going to do after we reach a few milestones, after we get those circuits, after we launch somewhere close to a thousand rockets, uh, I'm going to start a modded series using one mod because the .15 patch just came out. This guy's back to 83. We'll launch another 10 in just a moment. The .15 patch just came out. And it is easily the biggest patch the game has ever received. It changes so much. It adds, it adds a uh, uranium ore in nuclear power types. It changes a lot of stuff. Uh, there's different rendering type things, which I won't get too big into all the details of the patch, but it's really massive. One thing that's really big it does, it changes the water boiler, which are found here in all my steam engine complexes. complexes. It changes that from a 1x1 one one tile to a 2x3 tile. So all of my steam engine areas, if I update this particular map to the .15 patch, they are all going to be totally broken. So all of that, all of that, all of that will totally need rebuilding. 1,500 steam engines, worthless. Uh, and a number of other details, which uh, I'm just not, I'm not going to bore you with. But uh, maybe I'll put a link to the patch notes in the description or something. Okay, are we ready yet? 92%. Another thing I did uh, recently to kind of get back in the swing of meiosis and to kind of do some uh, off-camera maintenance-y stuff, I streamed some uh, design work. We created a garage system for my many cars. So each car has its own little garage slot that it goes into. And it's got uh, lights. The turrets are purely cosmetic. Uh, it's got lights, walls, and it's got some uh, requester chests, which we will set up to provide things which the individual cars need. Like this guy is our uh, solar panel car for going out to extend our solar panel network. I've got like 60,000 solar panels. I don't need more for a while, but I have a car for that. This guy, that's why this, uh, by the way, they also have labels. So that's why this has S here. This is our solar panel car. This one is over here is our turret car. That's why it's got a T. So uh, it's got turrets, and it also has stuff for killing aliens. It's got ammo and capsules and all that kind of stuff. And then up here, this one is our concrete car for laying down the roads and the other cell details. All that, anything that requires the bricks or the concrete. This guy is our build car. So uh, for making cells, he's got inserters. He's not quite stocked up properly, but he's got... Uh, inserters, he should have belts and assembly machines and beacons and that kind of stuff. Modules. This guy is the oil car. So he's kind of like uh, for building stuff relating to oil. So the oil expansions or different oil refining areas. So pump jacks and pipes, all that kind of stuff. This guy is, um, this guy's for hauling. Yeah, this is my hauling back and forth car. So I typically keep him empty. And in case I need to carry a ton of stuff around... That's what he's for. Are we done over here? Oh, we're not done yet. Okay, it looks like I ran out of stockpiled materials. This this base is not optimized. It's not even anywhere, anywhere remotely close to launching a rocket a minute. Like, not even close. Not even ridiculously close. Not even, not, not even a little bit close. Uh, another thing I've been doing off camera is trying to clean up the area we started with. I guess since we've launched all the rockets I have supplies for at the moment. Oh, here comes a train. Maybe that'll be what we need. We can go take a look at where it all started. The initial cell, the stem cell, which is, it's like that uh, coleocanth that you thought was extinct, but you discovered, oh, it's still lurking in those cold waters. Yes, it's still here, a little bit in peace. The only thing it provides is uh, electronic circuits for our miscellaneous, our secondary cell, which uh, provides some miscellaneous stuff we don't have individual cells for yet. But over the course of time, I have, uh, it's gotten a, a little bit messy, and so I've been trying to clean it up. And one of the things I would like to do is uh, set up our depot cell. Maybe we can clean up the rest of this. My inventory is mostly full. That's what this guy is for. Transferring stuff. Okay, um, 
Okay, save. Looks like I've been recording for 10 minutes. All right, or eight minutes, or however long that's set to. I guess just put that in there, all right? What else can we grab? Probably not all of this. No, definitely not. But maybe one more trip, and I will have cleaned up all of the miscellaneous crap that just ended up getting stored in random chests over time, because we are going to have an automated storage system, which seems like a, an odd thing to add at episode 46 of your series. Now, if this had been a normal series and we had switched over to, like, robots and logistics uh, early on, we would have automated all of our, like, anything I want on my person uh, with, like, like log logistic transfers and requests and all that kind of stuff. Would have automated that ages ago, but because everything's been separated by trains, uh, we haven't really had that. But we'll set that up now. Let's actually, let's tell you what. I do have this stuff kind of semi-sorted. Put all of you in there. Looks like I put rocket fuel in there. And do I have a solar panel one? I do. Okay. Uh, I tell you what, I'll grab that stuff later. But uh, one of the other things I want to do is I want to set up our depot cell here, which I think we set up, started making at least around episode 45 or 44. I don't actually remember. But this place is going to deliver all kinds of stuff from the other cells that we might want uh, for our for our use, particularly for building new things. So we're going to start with our coal cell, or with coal delivery from a coal cell. And basically, um, circuit... Yeah, we can, I thought at first that we could use our logistics network and just tell it how many things to keep in the network. But since uh, our system is going to be very simple, these are going to be our passive provider chests. And all of our requests will come directly from that. And I guess if I ever dump stuff out, I will have to dump it back into the right chests. Uh, we're not going to use a circuit condition. We're going to say... Uh, just... Item count, inventory empty, circuit condition... Let's see, we're going to the coal cell, we're going to pick up stuff for 30 seconds, and then we're coming back. Oh yeah, we're just going to say, if it's here and its inventory is empty... Um, yeah. Then go pick stuff up. And so with that in mind... Yes, I've already limited this. We don't need much coal here, really. The coal here is going to fuel the other trains, and that's its main purpose. I don't actually need coal on my own person ever. So it will take a few trips to fill up. One, two, three. Yeah, it's going to take three trips to fill these up, and then a fourth one to fill its own inventory up. But then it should just sit here basically forever. So we can go here, we can delete this condition, so it only... It's uh, going to come back and wait till its inventory is empty. Coal cell, there's All right, go ahead, buddy. I think you've got fuel. Yeah, okay, that's enough. You will pick up fuel on the way. Uh, and then we can start laying out some of the other trains while we're here. Let's see, I know I had... There they are. Okay, let's grab these guys. Do we, do we have the availability for more... Rocket launch is not quite yet. Okay, so uh, we have potentially 32 slots here for stuff. And we're just going to kind of add things one at a time. And we're going to do the very basics first, just like iron and copper and steel. Oh man, the stutter. Okay, so this guy will be an iron train... Um, and maybe we'll let him sit here until our coal train comes back. I think these guys are requesting, yes, they're requesting 400 coal, which is more than enough. So we want you to go to, I'm sure I have an iron cell somewhere. Uh, I don't think it matters which one. Let's go to iron cell two, because that one will be around longer. We'll say time pass 30 seconds. It's on manual, good. Uh, and then we want it to come back to, actually, let's change the name. We want to rename this to 31 Iron. Oh, bam. Okay, plus. And now there's just, you know, they're in order there. 31 Iron and inventory empty, like the other one. And that coal cell is probably going to be back in not too long. We can change the color to something kind of irony colored, which is... Just a gray. Put everything in the middle. Yeah, okay. Good enough. Uh, and then we want to limit this because we don't really need that much iron ever. So we'll say the train will carry that much. Shift 
right click to copy and then limit these guys how much iron do i really need not that much so we want to limit all of those shift right click and shift left click to copy paste properties okay those are all limited now uh, i could i guess we could just start with uh solid fuel and wait for the the coal train to come back, or we could check on... Oh, that's probably it right there. No, no, it would be coming down here. So if it was coming from the coal cell... Oh, I see, there was multiple trains fueling up all at once. Okay, so I guess we just have to wait. But we can get this guy going for the time being anyway. Oh, uh, stop that. Oh, dang, it's slightly too far forward. Okay, okay just go. Oh, now you're out of fuel. <laughs> because it was... Um, okay, I can get rid of that. For the moment. Now go. Alright, get out of here. So I'm going to do that with a, a variety of trains. And we'll continue to stockpile supplies. I guess it takes a lot to load up 10 silos all at once. We can check their progress. Yeah, okay, pretty close. So the first handful of trains are set up. Some of them are still delivering supplies. And in the amount of time it took me to do that, I also went around and did some other various basic maintenance, like cleaning out aliens from the borders. Uh, in that amount of time, we've only supplied enough supplies to launch one more rocket, but that is gonna set us at an even 100 rockets launched. So let's go ahead and do that. That's a pretty interesting, awesome, and magnificent milestone. 100 rockets lost, it's gonna be loud as hell. I'm guessing that I, in the future Zisto edited this to be not quite la so loud in uh, editing. But present tense Zisto is having his eardrums blown out. Okay, there we go. So, uh, the fact that we haven't supplied more than one rocket's worth of stuff, actually, we're 68% of the way done for these other ones. But you know what I mean. Um, we've supplied like six rockets worth of stuff. We just have have those spread over 10, so none of them are actually full. But in the amount of time, stuff's empty. If you look at the trains here, the steel guy is noticeably absent. And that's because... Dun dun dun! Our ore patch is running out almost dry, this ore patch here. We have an extreme shortage of iron coming into our steel cell. And also, in addition, our iron and copper patches here in our super mega circuit cell that's making the electronic circuits, the green ones, those are running dry as well, so we're going to have to do something about both of those. The long-term solution is to make expansions out to places like this and to mine this stuff up and the cart in the ore to wherever it's needed. Um, a longer, a shorter-term solution is to mine up something nearby and deliver it via belt, which is what we're going to do right now, actually. So let's hop in the car and head over there. I need to pick up some more belts along the way. We're also incidentally uh, running extremely short on copper, not copper, coal, at our steam engine areas. Um, those are less of an issue because I have so many solar panels now, we can mostly exist without them. They're nice for the transition period from dusk or dawn when we're going from accumulators to solar panels or vice versa. We're up to 18 million electronic circuits crafted, by the way, but we want to speed that up and a good way to do it is to speed up our production of these green circuit guys. Yep. Yeah, that is definitely operating at a reduced, diminished capacity. This guy over here... Oh, well, okay, apparently I missed three little ore guys, but uh, totally exhausted there. These belts are not even remotely close to being full. Let's run over here to the nearby ore patch we're going to use to uh, buffer it up a little bit. So, in the... Like, in a long-term situation, we will need to reconfigure this guy so that uh, instead of using uh, ore from this patch, we will um, be delivering it via train. That's going to be kind of a pain in the butt. What I really should do, and if I, like, could do it all over it, it was kind of hard with this particular, this particular map because we have the alien fighters on maximum setting. So expanding for space has actually been extremely time-consuming. At least 50% of my time on this map 
has been a result of killing aliens. Okay, let's get this off the bar. We want, uh, what do I want, this? Yeah. Okay, so we need to kind of work with uh, the, the belt situation there. So we probably want to orient them this way. And then we want to come down like that. Yeah, we'll, we'll put down what we can, and then I'll retrofit it so that it should work. These drill guys should uh, operate one block outside of their bounding box. So we can do things like this to uh, make up those lost areas. Should be fine. And then this one is totally outside. We can come back through here and get rid of these. Yeah, in, in a long term, if I wanted to like really make this base last for like 800 hours instead of 250 or something like that, uh, what we'd have to do is we'd have to completely retrofit the way we process things. The, the the current way we've been doing it is we've been mining up ores and smelting them on location and then training those out. What I would have to do is I'd have to make a much larger, I mean like much larger smelting area and then bring in ores from all different areas. Uh, and then I would have to send um, other ores to like a steel processing area. We would have to reconfigure basically the entire base which is not exactly practical. Which is why we're going to be moving on to a, a modded series in not too long. Oh, the belts are freaking the wrong way. Oh, well. <laughs> I guess we can fix that. That's not too big of a deal. And I'm running the wrong way. We need to go the other way. We need to get rid of this. Yeah, it's much better. Okay. Yeah, if you run ahead, it. yeah, there we go. Okay, perfect. I remember how to play this game. Okay, so we've got uh, three belts there. We need to switch these over to undergrounds, like so. And then run those all the way back to uh, where the steel processing is actually occurring. This will help a little bit. This is actually probably going to double our steel production because we're so bottlenecked at the moment. Uh, and the next thing we need to do, we need to grab Mr. Blueprint Book with my balancers. And need to trim that off and we can do this and uh, this is probably not enough to even get three full belts out of them so actually let's do this let's combine these two like that and then I'll just have to run two of these belts all the way back down there there we go. So that should help a little bit. It's only a tiny band-aid. Most of this thing is empty and we really need to like start bringing in iron from somewhere else. And looking at the map, there is really nowhere any closer. I mean, there's this iron patch that is even farther away. So uh, I think we'll use this tiny band-aid while we exhaust this guy. You know, we could actually, we're not really using this iron patch over here. And that is about the same distance. Maybe I'll use that one as well. But uh, that should help quite a bit. These belts look full, but these the belts we were bringing iron in were a bit backed up. We're going to catch up to there we go. Okay. So this is what the this is what it's actually going to look like. The amount of ore we're getting from those patches, which should last for a little while at least. So let's come here to where it's actually caught up. Right there, we should be getting the actual amount uh, that the belts are receiving in just a moment. Okay, there. I think the belts have mostly caught up. So this is still a, a pretty nice improvement. It's only a band-aid, but it's gonna help. Next, we've gotta do the same thing for our super mega circuit cell, making electronic circuits to speed up our circuit production. Currently, we're making like only 2,800 uh, red circuits an hour, or green circuits. Yeah, that's what, like 180, or a minute, I mean, rather. That's 180,000-ish an hour. So it's gonna take us a long time to get to 20 million. So we need to do something about that. We can get rid of these. So let's uh, deconstruct, let's tell you what, let's deconstruct half of it. I'll keep the other half so that we can mine up these dudes. Like so, that should take care of that. This guy's got 10,000 extra. We'll just leave those there. Um, deconstruct some of it. I'll come back and deconstruct the rest when we actually need to uh, Add in a train station. If we ever get that far, we'll see. Okay, so where did my car go? It's way up there. All right, next we need to basically go do the same thing for this copper patch to bring down ore to there. 
And this iron patch to bring iron ore up to there. It's gonna be kind of messy. So you can see a little bit of a change here just from adding in that copper ore. Our production has skyrocketed from about 3,000 a minute to 10,000 a minute. That's a pretty big change. Uh, I'm kind of assuming all of these iron ore furnaces are completely backed up, so they're all full of 100 iron each. And that iron is going to be depleted, and then things are going to slow down again until I add some extra uh, iron to uh, our back end here which is what I'm about to do. I just want to kind of notice the change as it happened. That helps quite a bit. Uh, that'll speed us to our 20 million electronic circuit goal quite a bit faster. Here's my car. Let's see, can I dump any ore? No. All my copper ore has been dumped. Okay, time to head off. And oops, oh, we're going the wrong way. Time to head off and supplement the iron ore. And I'll probably trim off all of these uh, not being used little smelter guys they are actually their drills electronic mining drills I'm gonna pick up all these guys that are not being used so that uh, I can route my my iron ore belts right through this spot in just a second all right just about ready to attach the belts for the uh, the supplemental iron ore the production fell back down to 4,000 electronic circuits a minute which i kind of predicted our iron furnaces here they are emptied out and the copper ones have backed out so i expected to go back up a little bit maybe to like to 6k would be good uh, any kind of improvement at all is a, is a nice number Okay, let's add those, and we'll, we'll of course also have to wait until these empty out as well to see what the equilibrium is, which one needs it more. And I picked up a lot of, oops, I didn't mean to do that. Let's put some of this extra stuff in the car. Picked up a lot of like random ore rerouting these belts. I also need to go get rid of some stone. Okay, there we go. So let's just do it this way. Oops. What did I just pick up? Did I pick up iron plates? No, okay. Dump it all into here. There we go. You are now smelting iron. And can we, re I don't, can we replace all these with productivity? Because that would be a good idea at this point now that I'm kind of, uh, my big huge ore patches are kind of diminished. Let's get rid of all this ore first and then I'll check. If we can, I'm definitely gonna come back here and uh, go back over these guys. Oh, we can. I do not see the productivity bar though. Like, it doesn't seem like it's working when you have a productivity module in, oh, I was looking at the wrong one. Okay, it is working. How did that happen? Okay, that's weird. Uh, okay, but anyway, we, yes, I definitely need to retrofit these because we need to make the most of our ore patches. In uh, my recent live stream of my Osis, by the way, we did, uh, I forgot to mention this at the beginning of the episode. I did a lot of exploration of neighboring areas to try to figure out uh, what the, the next place to expand to is gonna be. A lot of ore patches overall. We took note of the ore density as we ran through, and it's no secret the farther you get away from uh, the original spawn, which is right here at the stem cell, that was the original spawn. The farther you get, the denser the ore is, and the ore right way up here is ridiculously dense, but it's also very far away. But we will need to expand to get some more ore patches. There is a lot of a lot of guys here, but they're not going to last that long. We'll probably make one iron one for this. And then maybe one copper one for all of these and just connect them all up with belts. So I don't have to reroute the, uh, the trains very often. Connect up all these iron ones. I guess that'll keep us going for a while. But then we're going to have to think about where are those trains going? Because they're not going to a central smelting area. I've got multiple smelting areas. And uh, from other mega bases I've seen, I've, I've definitely been taking mental notes that uh, people will have like one super duper smelting area and bring in everything via train. Okay, so let's see. Okay, so these have emptied. Oh, let's see if the copper ones have emptied out and let's take a look at what our overall production is after we've uh, buffed up our supply. These are still at 100, which means we need even a little bit more iron. So these four belts are, yeah, they're, they are completely filled up. 
but we are splitting them into six. Well, five and a half. One, two, three, four. Yeah. Oh, what's going on over here? This guy is hardly getting... Oh, that's for iron plates. One, two, three, four, five, six. Four belts into six. We could squeeze in an extra two belts worth of compressed iron ore. Even though it doesn't quite look like we have enough That's enough space for that. Oh, actually, no. Only one extra belt. But anyway, uh, this one is still full. This one is still full. Coming down here into our production, let's take a look at how it looks. Run down the belts. Are we producing quickly? We are producing more or less four compressed belts of green circuits at the moment. The actual production number is 9.4, 9.6, nine and change, thousand electronic circuits per minute. And we can even back up to like an hourly figure here. The blue line, no, we're looking for the red line here. Spiked up a bit. The blue line is um, our copper cables, which are needed in electronic circuits. Those spiked a ton. I'm not standing in the path of training, am I? No, I am not. All right, guys. Well, I've just finished hooking up yet another ore patch into our Band-Aid situation. So I hooked up this iron patch to additionally supplement our steel. This place, which used to be separated and refined, is going to start to look like a bit of a spaghetti factory. I hope to avoid that. I came over here. I'm sort of tracing down all the different things that are slowing us down at this point. Steel's a bit better. Electronic circuits are quite a bit better. And one of the things that's really slow right now is plastic. I come over here and we don't even have coal. Uh, yeah, we're low on coal, which means we need more coal, we need more iron, we need more copper. So I think the logical, the most straightforward thing to do next is uh, we need to expand over here around Railroad Lake and we need to hook up all these different ore patches. Maybe I'll make like one big coal ore patch, one big copper ore patch, one big iron ore patch, hook them all up to belts and have three different stops where trains can come and pick those things up and supplement the rest of the base because it is starving. We are consuming so much that, um, yeah, we've consumed 72 million copper cables, 40 million iron plates. You, you get the idea, right? Uh, apparently, we've produced 22 million electronic circuits, so I don't know what's going on with this achievement. Maybe the achievements were added halfway through. Actually, you know what? I think that's exactly what happened. Anyway, uh, let's go launch another rocket, or however many are sitting there, to end the video. All right, back at the silo cell, and looks like we have several that we can launch. Let's go ahead and launch those up, and uh, next episode we'll try to fix some more holes in our production cycle. Try to launch some more rockets, as many more as we can, on our quest to, uh, well, on our quest to launch rockets. Here we go, that's, I don't know how many more that is. One, two, three, four, about six. I guess we can just look at the counter. That's gonna be the end of this episode. We'll see you next time for more Factorio. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. One, two, three, four, yeah, six more. 106 rockets sent. This is loud. Oh my God. Uh, but I'm sure I made it quieter in editing. Hint, hint to my future self. Save map, oh. Oh, so anticlimactic, I love it. I do that on purpose, actually. I timed the clip specifically to do that. Not really. Okay, that's it. End of the episode. Bye-bye.